What is the concept of multicast? One object is referring to multiple methods. So that is what I will call it as a multicast delegate. If there is any changes happening, so it will trigger the event and it will notify you regarding the changes. So that's what I will call it as an event. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on delegates and events. So guys, so it's going to be a very interesting and important topic that we need to understand here. So what exactly that we have studied in our previous session? It's all about single cast delegate. So guys, in today's session, I will be discussing multicast delegate. So what exactly multicast delegate is all about? And also what exactly events? Yes. It's time for all of us to understand that in detail with the program. So let's start without wasting much of your time. So guys, we have multicast delegate. So before I understand this multicast delegate, it's very important that we need to recollect what is single cast delegate. Imagine we have one object of type delegate. So that object is referring to one method. So that is what we call it as a delegate. And also we call it as a single cast delegate. I repeat this concept to all of you. Listen to me carefully. Imagine I have object. So what is this? I will call this as an object. So I have one object which is referring to or which is creating a reference to one method. So guys, so this is what I will call it as a single cast delegate. So now what is the concept of multicast? One object is referring to multiple methods. So that is what I will call it as a multicast delegate. So this is what you need to remember. We also call this multicast delegate as a combinable delegates. That's another name that we have. And most importantly, when it comes to the multicast delegate, you need to remember the return type must be void. Whenever I'm using the return type for the multicast delegate, I should have the return type as void. I cannot use int is what you need to remember. I should print the value there itself in that particular method itself is what you need to remember and it's most important that none of the parameters of delegates cannot have the output parameter so we have discussed different types of parameters right so when it comes to a method so in that parameter list so we have something called output parameter output parameter in the sense what from the method so you are sending out the value through the parameter okay so we all know that so we take the value inside to the method using the parameter but when it comes to the output parameter we are giving out the value from the method okay to outside the method using the output parameter but when it comes to the multicast delegate i'm not supposed to use that is what you need to remember all right let's take an example of multicast delegate and understand with this program so guys, listen here. I think it's very simple. You guys will, will be able to understand. So can you all guess what exactly that we have here? It's obviously we are trying to declare a delegate. So with the keyword uh, delegate and the return type is void and the name of the delegate is M delegate is what I have given. And at the end, the semicolon is what I have used at the end of the statement. That's what you need to remember. All right, so then after that, the name of the class is dm then followed by observe static public void display so it's a simple function that we have used just we are trying to print what exactly we are trying to print we are trying to print new delay so that's what i'm trying to do here in the same way i'm trying to use one more method so we are trying to create two methods okay one is display another one is print so in the display we are trying to print new delay and in the printer we are trying to print New York. So this is what you need to understand. Why I'm stressing on New Delhi and New York? Because I'll be discussing with respect to this in the output. All right, so fine, I have two methods. So we all know that, right? Then after that, I'm coming back to the main class, okay? So in the main class, obviously I have a main method. That's what you need to observe here. So after that, the most important part that we need to remember is we are trying to create the instance for the delegate. All right, so observe M delegate is the delegate which I have created. So for this, I'm trying to create the instance. Instance in this is object. So fine, M1 is the instance that I'm trying to create, and M2 is the instance that I'm trying to create. And what exactly that we are trying to do here? With the help of this instance, I'm creating the reference to this method. So we have given dm.display in the sense what? So in this object, we are storing the reference of this display. 
So we are trying to connect. Okay, that's what you need to understand. The second one, what I have in the M2, obviously I'm trying to create the reference to this printer. Here I'm trying to connect. This method is what you need to remember. So fine, I'm done with that. Now I'll be performing some calculation. I'll create two more instances of uh, delegate. That is M3 and M4. And also I have M5, which will, which will be performing different operations. So M1 plus M2, M2 plus M1, M1 plus M2. Okay, this is what I'm trying to create and I'm performing the operation. So which will give me the result of this, okay, which is performing the addition, okay, M1 plus M2, M2 plus M1 and M1 plus M2. So what is that I need to understand here? M1 plus M2, M2 plus M1, M1 plus M2. What is M1 plus M2, sir? You're not understanding this. Where exactly you are trying to implement the concept of multicast delegates? Let me explain that now. So guys, observe here. So imagine this is the instance of the delegate that I have taken. Okay. So this is also the instance of the delegate. Let's imagine like that. So D1 is an instance. Okay. D1 is an instance. D2 is also an instance. How many methods? Okay. D1 is referring to, let's imagine in the program. So display. D1 is referring to display. Let's understand like this. D1 and D2. Imagine D1 is referring to display. D2 is referring to print. So that's what you need to remember. So display and print. Okay. So I have one object of uh, delegate which is referring to two methods. So this is where I'm using the concept of multi delegates is what you need to remember. So this is what you need to call it as a multicast delegates. So that's what we have done here. M1 is referring to display and M2 is referring to print. So M3 is what I will call it as a multicast delegate because it is creating a reference for more than one method is what you need to remember. So this is what we call it as a multicast delegates. So moving forward to the next one that we have. So events, it's a very simple topic. So Events in the sense, I will call it as an LRM. So if anything happens, so event will trigger and it will notify you about the event which is occurring. If there is any changes happening, so it will trigger the event and it will notify you regarding the changes. So that's what I will call it as an event. So how do I declare or how do I uh, define this event? Uh, what is the syntax that I need to follow? It's very simple. So guys, observe here the syntax which I need to follow. That's going to be modifier. Then followed by I will be having a event type and then I will have a event name. So this is what you need to understand. So how many things you did not say? Yes. One, two, three and four. So this is what you need to remember. Four parts. All right. The first one is modifier. It could be public, private, shield, static. Okay. So the next one is the keyword event. Third one is type. What type of value that you are sending? And the fourth one is event name. At the end, you have to end the statement with the semicolon is what you need to remember whenever you are defining the event. Let's understand what exactly event is all about. So guys, you all know that we are using the namespace called system. So fine, we don't have any doubts with that because we are using that from the beginning of the class. All right, so then followed by I have delegate. So what is that we have in the delegate declaration? So guys, observe here, I'm having a modifier. Then followed by I have a keyword delegate, which I have to use whenever I'm creating the delegate. Then followed by I have a return type as void and the name of the delegate that is e delegate is what I have. Then followed by I have a string as a parameter at the end of the delegate, I have the semicolon. So this is how I declare the delegate, which all of you know, but we are not discussing the events here, right? So now let me come to that part. So guys, I'm coming to the next class. So after that, the name of the class is event class then followed by it's very important that you need to pay little attention because I'm creating the event okay so as I told you in the previous slide we have four different parts when I'm creating the event the first one is modifier here the modifier is public the second one that I'm using is keyword that is event the third one that I have here is e delegate so e delegate in the sense this is what I will call it as a return type so e delegate is a type of the delegate which I have created and the last one that I have here is event name. That's what you need to remember. The name of the event is status. Now, how do I trigger that? So for that, we have to create a method. So observe 
what exactly that we are trying to create. So guys, public, observe here carefully, public void trigger event is a method which I'm going to create. So in that, so if status is not equal to null, so guys, then status trigger event. Okay, so this message will be executed. So that's what you need to remember. All right, so if the trigger, if any event occurs, so this message will be executed. So that's what you need to remember here. That's what I have defined in this class. So fine, let's go to the main class. What is that we have in the main class? Obviously, we have the main function in the main class and I'm trying to create the instance for the delegate. Observe here carefully, there is a little changes in the program. All right, so fine. Event class is what here? What is that I'm treating it as a event class? Event class in a sense, this one. For this one, I'm trying to create the instance. So what is the name of the instance? EC is the name of the instance is what you need to remember. EC in the sense for this class, for this event class, I'm creating the object. So fine, after that I have event test. What is this event test? Where did we use this event test? Observe event test in the sense this class. For this class also we are trying to create the instance. That's what you need to remember. So fine, after that EC. Observe EC belongs to which class? EC is an object which we have created for this one. So EC dot status plus okay is equal to so is equal to i'm using the new operator which allocates the memory for the delegate and then so e delegate is what e delegate in the sense the delegate which i have created so within that so i'm creating et dot event catch et in the sense the object of this one dot event catch is what i'm writing so that's what you need to remember so whenever there is any event so that will be notified okay when i call this function so if there is any event so i will be printing this so event catch is what's up so observe event catch is a method that i have defined so i will pass the parameter in the string if there is any event occurs from this method the event will be triggered and that will print saying that event triggered so whatever i have given here triggered event so this will be printed as an output if any event occurs in the program. That's what you need to remember. This is how we are using or we are writing a program for the event is what you need to remember. So basically what is that you need to remember? I will be creating the object for this and also I'll be creating the object for this. So why are we creating the object for this? Because I have a method so called event catch in this program. So if I want to invoke that so i have to create the object for that that is the first point that you need to remember second point event i will be creating in in this class and also i will be creating the delegate in the top of the program is what you need to remember so three things you need to remember the first one is all about declaration of the delegate second thing is all about the declaration of the trigger event and the third one is all about the method that you have here and the fourth one, so you have to create the object for both the things. If you know this one, and the most important line that you need to remember is this one in this program. If you know this much, so you are done with this topic is what I would like to tell you. So this is going to be the end of this chapter. So guys, hope I made it very simple and easy to remember this topic. So take care. Bye-bye.